Yes, you read that right. I've played Planet Coaster for over 3,000 hours. Now, to some of you, those might still be rookie numbers, but I'd say that's a considerable portion of my life I've dedicated to a silly little theme park management game, and I figured I'd impart some of the knowledge I've gained in the process. I've already got multiple videos on the channel for those of you just starting out, but this video is more aimed at those of you with some hours under your belt hoping to learn something new. Let's kick things off with a real time saver of a building hack. We all know the advanced move can be an absolute nightmare at times. Neither the world axis or the relative axis will play ball, and so you're left shunting the grouped pieces all over the ruddy place. Well, here's the secret. When it comes to a scenery group, the game will take the dominant orientation and commit to it, so all you need to do is outweigh the angle you're after. Let me demonstrate. All I want to do is copy this custom window across, but no, Planko isn't having any of it. However, if I just add a couple of art shapes to the group in the same orientation as the wall, Bob's your long lost auntie, we're away. Then all that's left to do is remove your additional pieces. No more zigzagging your way around a build. Path cover is something that perplexes players on a regular basis. It's probably the question I'm asked most in comments. I've become quite known for my path cover at this point, but what is path cover I hear you cry? Well, don't cry, I'm about to explain. Look at this nightmare of pathing in my recent park, Radha Valley. Not very attractive, is it? Well, here's the thing. Once I've got all my pathing going wherever I need it to, I simply cover it all up with whatever ground texture I choose. I highly recommend the stone textures by Artificial Artist, as I use them absolutely everywhere. If you'd rather not use TMTK or you're on console, don't fret. You can use whatever texture you like, be it temple pieces or a flipping barn door. The choice is yours. Path cover not only hides any spaghetti junction of pathing, but aids in creating a seamless look to your park. A lot of players ask for advice on how to make a build look less plain and boring. One trick I learned early on that was a literal game changer was to stop using pieces for their intended purpose. It's easy to scroll through the scenery list and say, well, that's a cargo crate for when I need a cargo crate. That spaceship wing will be great for when I decide to build a spaceship from scratch absolutely never. Take that cargo crate and use it for a wall trim. Take that spaceship wing and use it as a bloody wall. Go nuts. One of the most fantastic things about Planet Coaster is that there are no rules, no restrictions, and your park is your park. There is no right or wrong. Try things, experiment. Sure, you'll make mistakes, but you won't know until you try. Color can make or break a park, and the best advice I can give is to utilize the full color spectrum rather than just the default colors. In the real world, unless something has literally just been painted, it rarely looks as vibrant as the base colors do in game. Even going a smidge darker or lighter can really help in selling a realistic build, if that's the aesthetic you're going for. This isn't just limited to build pieces either. The default light colors are way too oversaturated. Try knocking the color a bit further down towards the darker end of the spectrum and you'll see an immediate improvement. This is especially helpful when creating a slight boost for those non-emissive assets. For example, this neon looks dead just as it is, but by simply burying an area light into the ground just in front and sliding the color almost to black, you get the most beautiful glow that really sells the effect. I advise anyone to really have some fun with the lighting in Planko, because whilst it definitely has its issues, you can create some really beautiful night vistas. Now, are you ready for a guilty secret of mine? I quite often build non-theme park stuff in Planet Coaster. Yes, the embarrassing truth is out. I do non-theme park stuff in a theme park game. Blasphemy. But the fact of the matter is, Planet Coaster is a fantastic sandbox builder. Ignore the rides, ignore the coasters if you can. Sometimes it's just nice to build stuff and the game lets you. I've created random non-functioning buildings in high detail. TV sets complete with backstage areas. Heck, I've even created a railway with functioning signals. Creators like Metaparks have designed fully voiced interactive quest style experiences. Others create full music and light shows. The possibilities within this game are near endless and there's no shame in capitalizing on it. I'll often be playing another game, exploring the intricate level design of an open world RPG and think this would be incredible to recreate in Planko, so I do. It's so satisfying to use the Cobra engine to create your own world within the game. There is absolutely no shame in spending three hours in the game without laying a single piece of coaster track, trust me, and don't let the Thuzies tell you otherwise. Okay, we're bordering on the philosophical now. Let's get back to some practical in-game advice. I decided to ask some of the best creators in the community what advice they could give after all their hours in the game, and this is what they had to say. Starting off with the incredible YouTuber Yura, 
he gave some straightforward advice. Get some reference images to build from. Don't build too big, start out small. I completely agree with Yura here and actually mentioned both of those things in my How To Be Good At Planet Coaster video. The very deserving winner of the infamous New Park Who Disc contest, Metaparks, had this heartwarming message. There is such a great community out there that can help you with literally anything. Always so soppy that Meta, but he's right. The Planet Coaster community is without doubt the most supportive and welcoming of any I know. Always ready to receive new players with open arms and provide all the help they can give. There are countless Discord servers, Facebook groups and Twitch and YouTube communities, each one uniquely incredible for different reasons. Pixelated, the creator of the recent masterpiece that is Humanity, said, References, references, and more references. Get inspired by watching movies and playing games in the genre you're trying to create. It's so much easier to create original content if you know what exists. When you've got a basis, you can expand on that instead of reinventing the wheel. The Planko icon that is Wix said this whilst seemingly having a mental breakdown. I would say it would be to join a community, be part of something more, upload to the workshop, build different styles of theming, get familiar with the pieces in the game, don't do massive projects, I don't know man, there are so many. Ok Wix, I'm sorry I asked. Moving on to literally one of the most popular and OG Planet Coaster content creators Masked Bandit, he says, Restraint. Have a hard boundary for your project so you don't end up sprawled across the map. It helps keep scale, keep focus, and creates a much better atmosphere from my experience. The wonderful Corvus says, I'd say that starting your build small is one of the best things you can do. Starting small allows you to spend more time developing each part of your creation and makes it easier to alter parts after. Doing small creations also gives you the opportunity to test loads of different ideas without them taking too long. Also, you're less likely to abandon a creation if you start on a smaller scale, because you can add more to it later. When I was looking for creators to contact, I of course couldn't possibly ignore the supreme overlord of the Goodnice community, and Cockers had this to say. I say to people all the time, if you want to love what you build, build what you love. However fanciful your park may be, all the best builds are in some way based in reality and memory. So use reference material liberally, whether that be pictures and videos of places or films and games that you love. Get your grounding by copying things you actually like, and use that as the springboard. All of my best builds are at least 40% copied from reference, so get out there and copy, copy, copy. Finally, the aptly named poet, the Queen of Planko, said this, Don't be afraid to mix realism and imagination. It is so easy to get caught up in it needing to be perfectly realistic or perfectly fantasy, but it can and should be both. It is a creative game. Let your imagination lead you and don't stress about whether or not it exists in real life. Make it plausible, make it yours, and don't worry about the rest. I think the general consensus among all creators is to build for you, no one else. Just do what makes you happy. Inspired by something? Build it. Nobody's watching you. Just jump into the game and enjoy yourself. If you enjoyed this video, I have so much more Planet Coaster content on the channel, it's ridiculous. Anything from short tips and tricks videos to full park builds from start to finish. Have a peep, what have you got to lose? Let me just take this opportunity to thank Frontier for a fantastic game, thank you for watching this video, and I hope to catch you all again very soon.